Writer's Garden, just a dad doing dad stuff. If you like this stuff, please like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment. If not, don't worry, I'm going to keep making videos. I just wanted to do a behind the scenes of my haunted house before I take it down. Halloween is over, the trick-or-treaters have come and gone, uh, all the cousins have seen it. Uh, and I just want to show a quick, uh, you know, how everything works before it comes down. Uh, this year's theme was horror on the hill, and it's basically just because we're on a hill. Uh, it's <laughs> this year is kind of just a hodgepodge of all the stuff we've been doing over the years. Uh, next year, however, I am going to be doing one singular story theme uh, to kind of tie everything together, and everything's either going to be redressed or redone, new music, new lights, that kind of thing. Okay, so the first guy here is the mad scientist, and he, these are his speakers here, he usually talks, but I didn't have him talking because his, um, his directions, he used to give directions around the haunted house, but they're uh, for last year's haunted house, so I'd never uh, read the audio, so we just ran him silent, there was plenty of sounds going on uh, that we actually didn't need him uh, saying anything, and he just works, basically, this just moves back and forth, and this is hooked up to a wiper motor. A wiper motor, and it's got a little speed control there. Uh, yeah, and uh, he didn't have a sensor or anything. He would just... Um... Oh, actually, he did have a sensor. Yeah, he did. For the for the speaking, he had a sensor, this guy. Um, but he just kind of went back and forth. Um, and his arm moved back and forth like this, like he was moving a, uh, a lever. And uh, his whole body kind of uh, swayed back and forth. And that's pretty much the mad scientist. This lights up down here. There's some bones. And some uh, broken broken bits and bobs on there. And then over here we have the good old electric chair. And this guy has a strobe light in his belly. And that just goes off. And uh, that's a uh, uh, black light. It's one of those cheap uh, incandescent black lights. Don't, just, just really to color him while he's uh, electrocuting. And uh, he's got some audio with some buzzing noises too. Uh, and this guy is the, um, pirate, and I kind of got stuck with this guy. Uh, I can't really redress him because he came already piratey, uh, with an eye patch and everything. Uh, and that's all, like, glued on. I could probably, you know, uh, pull all that apart, but I, you know, got a Jolly Roger here. And this guy has a, a multicolor flashing strobe light right there. That lights him up, and he also has audio. There's the uh, the speaker right there, and it runs off of a little, like, $10 MP3 player. Those MP3 players are getting, uh, the cheap ones anyway, are getting really hard to find. They're getting more expensive, um, and I'm kind of moving away from them. Uh, because they're, you know, this, the, the ones that I was buying for, like, uh, 9 10 bucks are now, like, 20 bucks, and they're just as cheap, so... Uh, moving away from that and he used to have a fan and this all would kind of blow out You know all this creepy cloth around here would blow out um, But I didn't think the fan was uh, safe because to get it in there. I had to take it out of the case and so uh, I don't do that anymore <laughs> And this of course is Audrey 2 here and Audrey 2 would go back and forth. It's kind of like a scissor action there's this and there's another one inside here and then this bottom jaw is fixed to this, and the other one kind of pivots as the scissor. So the mouth kind of clamps shut. And it's full of uh, green LED fairy lights in here, and all this runs off of a plug-in motion sensor. Here's the, uh, here's the actual sensor part right here. And that's part of this scene, this guy on the, on the tractor here. Uh, and he had a light that would flash on him But not really too much going on with that and this guy runs off of a Wiper motor as well. I would uh, show you that but it's kind of like uh, It's it's way in there. And, uh, if you really yeah, you really can't see too much in there and this guy is my Creature crate. It's a variation on a monster in a box. It works on a linear electric actuator and this Pushes up, and he's got a uh, peekaboo in there uh, that controls that. I'll show you the peekaboo a little bit later. I have uh, some other things that run off of uh, those peekaboos and and uh, motors. So I'll show you that in a minute. And here, over here, is one of the oldest things I have. This is a infinity mirror. We call it the ghost machine. It's not plugged in. It's full of bones and stuff. And you really can't see. It's all dark over here. 
Uh, and basically what happens is, is uh, it's two mirrors, and then when the light turns on, you could see through this mirror, and there's all kind of stuff, and it goes on and on forever. And right next to it, we have the classic uh, Monster in a Box, which is one of these two, actually the first two things I ever did. Um, and he used to be the first thing, because like once you see it, it's kind of not as scary, but I kind of tucked it away behind this, so when you looked into the infinity mirror, this guy started going off right next to you. And so it was a little bit of a jump scare. Uh, but again, that's that thing's really showing its age and so a lot of other stuff are starting to outshine it. So I don't know how long I'm gonna be using that. And then this is a new barricade that I made over here out of fence slats. And then we got these guys, these hanging guys. These are just uh, Walmart specials uh, with batteries. And I got a couple that match, and they look nice, and it's covered in with creepy cloth. So you're walking through this in the dark with creepy cloth, and these, go these guys would go off. And then we have the ratchet robot. This is the sensor. Let's go in here. This is actually shelving material uh, that holds, like, pegs for, like, pegboards. Um that I picked up from a store that was going out of business. And this guy's arms, uh, let me see if I can get behind here, behind this guy here, hold on. Okay, so, let's see if we can get, alrighty, so this guy works on a, uh, that's a windshield wiper motor that rotates and pulls these cables here. Right, I'm sorry, this is so dark, but I don't have a light back here. Pulls these cables and it actually curls the arms up. And it used to have a much more bouncy motion. I had uh, plastic that I put slits in so it would curl up nice. Um, but they got real brittle over the winter and uh, snapped. So I replaced it with wood and some hinges. So it's, 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 I, probably only I would notice it, you know. And here is the, Let's see if we can get that. There is the microcontroller in there called a peekaboo. And uh, that is the easiest all-in-one solution for these things that I found without having to put it all together myself. Um, and honestly, when you start piecemealing a lot of this stuff, it actually ends up being about the same price as those peekaboos, uh, which can run for a whole set, like 120 bucks. Um, but this year, I actually got wise and started putting multiple, multiple animatronics on one sensor and one peekaboo. Uh, so if you're running three things off of one peekaboo, it's actually uh, pretty cost effective. And then I have these guys. I made these. You could pick these up. These hanging uh, um, spider pods or corpse bags or whatever you want to call them. Um, you could pick them up for like 30 bucks. But I actually made these out of cardboard and some drop cloths uh, and a piece of one by one and then because I kept moving around instead of tying the knots and undoing it I put it on uh, L brackets and I just screw them and unscrew them wherever I need them now uh, because they're, they're these are about four years old now I've done this a couple of times uh, and then just spiders just store-bought spiders and this year on the screen I had uh, I had spiders that I had uh, got from Atmos FX. And here's the uh, where, my, where I hide all my uh, garage stuff and the uh, projector. And then this year it actually spilled outside. So I'm not gonna open this door, I'll actually go outside in a second, hold on. Okay, we're outside, it's raining a little bit here. And this is the, uh, the new attraction uh, it's two breathing graves and a vomiting zombie, and I did a video explaining how I did this. A lot of my stuff, I have videos explaining how I did it, uh, so you can go back and watch. I just wanted to do a quick overview of uh, the uh, how I how I set up this year's haunted house, uh, and the breathing graves are basically just a um, a uh, windshield wiper motor with an AC adapter that spins an axle and with with cans on it, so it goes up and down and up and down. Uh, and the cans are placed at different points in the axle, so it kind of gives it like a, a wavy motion. Uh, and then this guy here, he's got a, a a little $25 fountain pump that runs through his mouth. And then uh, 
he's got a, uh, a light there. I've already done a video explaining it. Here's a sensor over here. Uh, so when you walked out this door, this sensor went off, the breathing graves went off, and about 25 seconds later, this guy would uh, vomit pink slime out of his mouth. And I got all the, uh, the gravestones back there. Uh, and uh, yeah, the new graveyard worked out great. Uh, the only thing is, I meant to put up plastic across here so you couldn't see into the graveyard, because this is the last thing. Uh, but it was all right. No one really uh, was looking in my yard as they came up the hill. Um, and because it was on a motion sensor, you really didn't see what was going on anyway. Uh, but next year, I think that I'm going to start from this side and then work my way in backwards than, I, than the way I usually do it.